The Super Bowl, A Brief History The Super Bowl is one of the most iconic events in American sports culture, watched by millions of people around the world every year. But how did this mega-event come about, and what is its history? The Super Bowl is the championship game of the National Football League, NFL, played annually in early February. The game is the culmination of the NFL season, which begins in September and runs through January. The Super Bowl is a huge event, attracting millions of viewers from around the world, and generating billions of dollars in revenue for the NFL and its affiliates. The origins of the Super Bowl date back to the 1960s when the NFL was still a relatively new and growing league. In 1966, the NFL announced plans to merge with the rival American Football League, AFL, with the first championship game to be held in January of the following year. The game was initially called the AFL-NFL World Championship Game, but it was soon renamed the Super Bowl, a name suggested by Kansas City Chiefs owner Lamar Hunt who was inspired by a popular toy called a Super Bowl. The first Super Bowl was played on January 15, 1967, between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The game was held at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, and it was televised by both NBC and CBS. The Packers won the game, 35-10, and quarterback Bart Starr was named the game's most valuable player, MVP. Over the years, the Super Bowl has grown into a massive event, with elaborate halftime shows, celebrity performances, and massive advertising campaigns. The game has become an American institution, watched by millions of people around the world every year. Some of the most iconic moments in sports history have taken place during the Super Bowl, including Joe Namath's famous guarantee before Super Bowl III. The New York Giants' upset victory over the undefeated New England Patriots in Super Bowl XLII, and the famous wardrobe malfunction during the halftime show of Super Bowl XXXVIII. Today, the Super Bowl is a cultural phenomenon, and it has become an important part of American sports history. The game brings together the best teams from across the country, and it gives fans a chance to witness some of the most exciting and memorable moments in sports history. Whether you're a diehard football fan or just a casual viewer, the Super Bowl is an event that you won't want to miss. The Super Bowl 57 Halftime Show, officially known as the Apple Music Super Bowl 57 Halftime Show, was the halftime entertainment of Super Bowl 57, which took place on February 12, 2023, at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It featured Barbadian singer Rihanna as the headline performer. It was televised nationally in the U.S. by Fox, Fox Deportes, and the Fox Sports and NFL apps, and was the first Super Bowl halftime show to be sponsored by Apple Music. Super Bowl 2023 Background and Overview In October 2019, Barbadian singer Rihanna revealed to Vogue that she had turned down an offer from the National Football League, NFL, to perform at the Super Bowl 53 halftime show in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick. In 2016, Kaepernick knelt during the national anthem at the start of NFL games in protest of police brutality and racial inequality in the United States. He later filed a grievance against the NFL and its owners in November 2017, accusing them of colluding to keep him out of the league. Kaepernick withdrew the grievance in February 2019, ahead of Super Bowl 53, after reaching a confidential settlement with the NFL. On September 22, 2022, the NFL announced that the new naming rights sponsor for the Super Bowl halftime show would be Apple Music starting with Super Bowl 57, replacing sponsor Pepsi, which had sponsored the previous 10 halftime shows. Some media reports alleged on social media that American singer-songwriter Taylor Swift would be the headlining performer, based on her associations with Apple and traditional Pepsi rival, Coca-Cola. Subsequently, various outlets reported that Swift had turned down the offer, claiming that she would not do the halftime show until her re-recording process was complete. Other sources said that Swift had never been scheduled in the slot.
On September 25, 2022, the NFL announced that Rihanna would headline the halftime show. The performance would be Rihanna's first live performance in five years since appearing at the 60th Annual Grammy Awards in 2018. In an interview with Apple Music's Nadesca Alexis, several days before the halftime show, Rihanna said she was on the 39th version of the show's set list. In the days leading up to the halftime show, Rihanna teased in an interview with Nate Burleson that she might bring out a surprise guest. 11. It was confirmed following the show that she was pregnant with her second child. Commercial Impact Rihanna's performance attained a total of 118.7 million viewers across TV and digital platforms, overtaking the Lady Gaga headline Super Bowl 51 halftime show, 2017, to become the second most watched halftime show in history, behind Katy Perry's Super Bowl 49 halftime show, 2015. Following the performance, Billboard reported that Rihanna's song catalog received a leap of 140% across all on-demand streaming services in the U.S. On February 12-13, her songs received 62.2 million on-demand official streams nationwide. Sales-wise, she sold 42,000 downloads in the U.S. during those two days. Umbrella and Diamonds were Rihanna's most streamed songs following the performance with 3.8 million and 3.2 million streams on February 12 to 13 respectively in the week ending February 16, Luminate reported that Rihanna had earned 166.13 million on-demand streams in the U.S. across her full song catalog. In doing so, she has received her best streaming week in the country ever. As a result of that, several of her songs re-entered the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart, including Umbrella at number 37, Diamonds at number 44, and We Found Love charted at number 48. The same week, Rihanna's studio albums sold a total of 142,000 album equivalent units in the country. For the week dated February 25th, five of Rihanna's albums charted within the top 50 of the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. Anti, 2016 charted at number 8 and managed to earn 36,000 equivalent albums in the country, 166% up, according to Luminate. Furthermore, Good Girl Gone Bad, 2007, charted at number 15, Unapologetic, 2012, at number 18, Loud, 2010, at number 26, and Talk That Talk, 2011, at number 49. With this feat, Rihanna became only the seventh act to place at least five albums in the top 50 on the Billboard 200 in the last 50 years. In the week following the performance, Rihanna's albums Good Girl Gone Bad and Anti re-entered the top 50 of the Australian albums chart at number 32 and 35, respectively. The same week, both of the albums also re-entered the UK albums chart. Anti at number 39 and Good Girl Gone Bad at number 42. Additionally, Loud charted at number 81. On the Norwegian albums chart, four of Rihanna's albums charted within the top 40 that same week, including Anti at number 19, Unapologetic at number 27, Good Girl Gone Bad, Reloaded, 2008, at number 36, and Loud at number 40. Entertainment Super Bowl Pre-game. American country singer Chris Stapleton sang the national anthem, actress Cheryl Lee Ralph performed Lift Every Voice and Sing, and R&B singer Kenneth Babyface Edmonds sang America the Beautiful. All three songs were also interpreted in American Sign Language by actor and Arizona native Troy Kutsuer, with America the Beautiful additionally interpreted in plain sign talk by Colin Denny. For the first time in Super Bowl history, the flyover was entirely crewed by females to celebrate the 50th anniversary of women flying in the U.S. Navy. For Navy aircraft taking off from Luke Air Force Base were used, a pair of F divided by a minus 18 F Super Hornets from the Strike Fighter Squadron 122 Flying Eagles, an F 35C Lightning II from the Strike Fighter Squadron 97 Warhawks 
and an EA-18G Growler from the Electronic Attack Squadron 129 Vikings. For Pat Tillman Foundation scholars then served as honorary captains during the coin toss ceremony, honoring the memory of Pat Tillman, the former Arizona Cardinals player turned U.S. Army Ranger who was killed in 2004 while stationed in Afghanistan. Halftime Main article, Super Bowl 57 Halftime Show On September 23, 2022 Apple Music was announced as the new naming rights sponsor of the Super Bowl halftime show, replacing Pepsi, which had sponsored the previous 10 halftime shows. Barbadian singer Rihanna was announced as the headliner of the halftime show on September 25. It marked Rihanna's first live performance in over five years. In a red outfit, she sang portions of 12 of her songs including Where Have You Been, Only Girl, In the World, and Work. She announced her pregnancy during the performance.